Hey guys, this is Alex here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the 10 wealthiest communities in America. And I say that word community specifically because we're actually diving into the to the small communities where there's nothing but just high incomes. So this is the list is the top 10 highest income communities based on annual income um, here in America. So we're not talking about the, all the rich people in New York City or Los Angeles. We're talking about where are these small little areas where it's just pockets of nothing but wealth and nothing but but high income individuals and really, you know, you have to have an extremely high income to live in one of these small communities. And I compiled this list um, based on the Bloomberg 2020 Richest Places list, which compiles the top 100 richest places in America based on annual income, which is what we're talking about here. Um, and I can just about guarantee you that most of these cities are not what you're expecting. And really all of these places are considered small communities or townships because they don't really have that many residents. It's not a very well-known large place. They're kind of just these hidden little golden communities um, where the average annual income is just absurdly high. So we're gonna be diving into that pretty deeply. These are not the New York cities and the San Francisco's of the world because this list is based on annual income. And although those large cities do have a lot of wealth, they also have a high population of lower income individuals as well. And that weighs down the annual income average. The top 10 list covers seven different states and the average annual income comes out to about $403,000 per year. Um, and that's the average for all 10 of these communities um, based on annual income. And you're gonna find these golden communities really sitting really right outside of some of the country's most thriving metropolitan areas, as to be imagined, um, because obviously that's where a lot of the high paying jobs are and a lot of the high paying companies. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into it. All right, number 10, Darien, Connecticut. With a population of just over 20,000 people, Darien, Connecticut sits just 37 miles northeast of New York City. And this is actually the smallest town on Connecticut's Gold Coast, which is a, uh, it's just an affluent region across Western Connecticut. And the town has an average annual income of about $353,000. And surprisingly, the town also has the youngest population of any non-college town in Connecticut, which is very surprising considering it has the highest annual income average. Um, and as I mentioned, it is a rather small town, so it has very little business or industry that's actually being operated within the township. Um, most of the residents are actually commuting to New York City for work, where they're clearly getting paid way too much money at a, uh, at a very young age. Number nine, Winnetka, Illinois. This small community is located just 16 miles north of downtown Chicago, and it's home to only about 12,000 residents, so not many people at all. Um, and I'm not even sure if it's considered a town because the almighty Wikipedia, which uh, I put way too much trust in to get my information, actually calls it a village. The village has an average annual income of around $354,000 and is very well known as a community that has been home to many famous movie sets over the years, most notably the classic 1990 Macaulay Culkin, Macaulay Culkin film, Home Alone. Other famous movies where uh, portions of the film were shot in Winnetka include Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Ocean's 12, National Lampoon's Vacation, as well as um, the more recent popular series, The League. Number eight, Glencoe, Illinois. Glencoe is, uh, is also considered a village and it's located on Chicago's North Shore. The community has a population of less than 9,000 people and the average home value sits right at about $1,067,000 with the average annual income right at about $358,000. Frankly, I couldn't find any interesting facts about this community, so we're just gonna sum this one up as another small town home to a few of Chicago's wealthiest and most esteemed families and professionals, and we're just gonna move on. Number seven, Highland Park, Texas. Highland Park, Texas is home to just under 9,000 residents and sits just four miles north of downtown Dallas. And the community was actually first formed back in the late 1800s by a group of investors from Philadelphia, but development was halted in 1893 by the un unforeseen panic of 1893, which was an economic depression that lasted four years into 1897. And I actually didn't know much about the, uh, the 1890s economic depression, so maybe I'll have to make a video documenting that. Development began again in 1906 when it was purchased by a new investor, which is when it became known as Highland Park. 
The median home price in Highland Park is over $1.5 million, and its residents earn a median annual income of around $365,000. It's been one of the wealthiest communities in Texas for quite some time now. Number six, Short Hills, New Jersey. Short Hills is another popular commuter town just right outside of New York City with a population of just over 13,000 people. The median home price is right around $1.8 million and the median annual income is around $389,000 per household. The town became popularized as a wealthy New York City suburb when a direct rail service making a direct rail service to Manhattan was established in 1996, making it easy for well-off Manhattan professionals to commute into the city without having to deal with the chaos of the New York City lifestyle. So as you can see, we're starting to see a trend thus far with the first half of this list being small little quiet communities, as I mentioned, located just outside of booming metropolitan areas. Number five, Los Altos Hills, California. So now we finally get to a community in the country's most expensive state, which is California. Los Altos Hills is a small community located right next to Mountain View, California, which is uh, in Santa Clara County, and it's home to many well-established and venture-backed tech companies, including the, all the almighty behemoth itself, Google, of course. Um, and as I mentioned, Los Altos is a small community. It's got only about 8,000 residents. It's home to a lot of high-ranking tech executives and CEOs. And get this, guys, the median home value is a staggering $7.75 .7 million, which is absolutely absurd. Um, and I mean, tech companies pay well, but even the highest paid tech workers would have trouble making ends meet in this community, um, making it really only, access only accessible to the extremely wealthy class. Um, the median annual income for households in Los Altos Hills, it sits right at about four, sits right at around $405,000. Number four, Cherry Hills Village, Colorado. So this is a state that I would not have expected to have come up with a city that earned a spot on, uh, earned a spot in the top five on this list. Um, although really with the explosion of industry in Denver, I shouldn't be all that surprised. Um, Cherry Hills Village is a small community just south of downtown Denver and it's home to, it's home to less than 7,000 residents. The community has been chosen for multiple major sporting events over the years, including the, uh, the 1985 PGA Golf Tour as well as the 2005 US Women's Open. And with a median home value of just over $2 million, the average, in the average annual income for households in Cherry Hills Village sits right at around $406,000 per year. Number three, Hillsboro, California. So yet another Bay Area city makes this list as Silicon Valley's deep pockets continue to attract the wealthiest and highest income earning individuals. Hillsboro is an unincorporated town in San, in San Mateo County with a population of just over 11,000 residents sitting 17 miles south of San Francisco and right on the cusp of many Silicon Valley tech bohemians. The median home price in this overpriced Bay Area community sits at just over $4 million, really making it only accessible to the millionaires, the elites, and of course, um, you know, the highly paid professionals trying to keep up with the Joneses. The median household income for Hillsborough residents is $430,000 per year. Number two, Scarsdale, New York. We have yet another New York City suburb taking the runner-up position here. Scarsdale is a small community with only 18,000 residents, most of whom the breadwinner of a family most likely commutes to Manhattan or some other New York City borough for work on a daily basis. It's located just 25 miles north of Midtown Manhattan. Scarsdale is well known for having colonial roots as it was originally founded by an English immigrant who purchased the land for his personal use um, and later on it actually saw quite a bit of bloodshed during the American Revolution. The average annual income for households residing in Scarsdale sits right at around $452,000 per year. And number one, Atherton, California. Yep, you guessed it. Topping this list for wealthiest places in the country is yet another Bay Area community. Atherton sits in the heart of San Mateo County next to several other affluent communities such as Woodside and Menlo Park. So just how expensive is it to live in Atherton, California? Well, let's put it this way. At the making of this video, the cheapest home on the market in Atherton currently sits at $2.5 million. That's, that's not the average. That's not the average home price in Atherton. That's the cheapest house on the market currently right now here in 2020, which is absolutely absurd. You can't buy something for less than two and a half million bucks. So hopefully that gives you a, a little perspective on just how expensive it is to live in this community.
It is home to some of the world's most famous tech billionaires and sports stars, including former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, Microsoft's Paul Allen, and of course the Bay Area's golden boy Stephen Curry, who just bought a $31 million estate in the community. And just how much does the average household in Atherton bring in on an annual basis? Bloomberg reports that the median annual income for Atherton residents currently sits at around $525,000 per year per household. So average person in Atherton is bringing in north of half a million bucks per year. So obviously quite the affluent community. So that's it you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that like button down below. It would really help me as I'm trying to, uh, to gain some traction here with the YouTube gods and uh, gain a little traction with the algorithm as I continue to add more content and attempt to, uh, to bring you guys as much value as possible. Um, so that would mean the world. Also, subscribe down below. I'd love to have you join the community and uh, continue to get alerted if you want to see more cool content like this. And lastly, if you guys are enjoying these informative videos, I know I've made a couple of these informative videos where it's more so informing, informing on trends rather than just sharing educational, breaking down tips or something like that. Um, these videos are not quite as practical as some of the other videos I've made. Um, but if you guys are enjoying these informative videos where I'm sharing certain trends, um, go ahead and leave that down in the comments down below so I can, you know, continue to, uh, to gain some motivation to continue making these types of videos. And if you don't want to see more, any more of these videos, if you feel like it's a waste of time and all you want to see is just practical step-by-step -step type tips that give you an actual outcome, go ahead and leave that comment down below as well. I'd love to start a conversation and continue to, uh, to improve these for you. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Thank you.